why everything you know about empathy is wrong. Okay, maybe not everything, but there are some big issues that I want to discuss. We usually think of empathy as something nice. If someone says, you're so empathetic, you say, aw, well thank you. And opposite, if someone says you're not very empathetic, I think you would feel offended. So you could say we value empathy. We think it is a good quality to have. Some even say that having the capacity for empathy is an important aspect of what makes us human. So it is not surprising that it is a very popular, interesting and important topic for research. But how do you research empathy? Can you measure it? And how would you do that? What is empathy exactly in the first place? I researched empathy research and I came across some pretty serious problems. Firstly, there is not really a consensus about what empathy means. In autism research alone, I found no less than 31 different definitions. And no, not just different wordings referring to kind of the same thing, but actually 31 different things. It is chaos. And as you can imagine, this chaos creates confusion. It leads people to misinterpret each other's results, holding back progress. This is in itself a bad thing because, you know, as scientists we want to make progress and work together effectively. But there is in my opinion an even bigger issue at stake here. Namely that some people are excluded from the very concept of empathy. And that while we think of empathy as something important. Taken together this can cause discrimination, thinking of some people as lesser humans even. To explain it, let me go back to the question how to measure empathy. While there are so many definitions out there, the one thing that researchers seem to agree upon is that empathy is in one way or the other an experience that relates to what another person is experiencing. The difficulty here lies in the word experience, because an experience is personal, subjective. You can measure all sorts of things, with brain scans, observations, questionnaires, but how can you ever know how someone actually experiences something? You can't. And that's why researchers somehow need to make assumptions on the relationship between an experience and something that can be measured. And in many cases, this doesn't have to be problematic. For example, even in this animation, when I showed you this face going from here to here, you assumed that this person felt bad, which was the case here, they felt offended. The thing is, this is not the same for everyone. If we consider the wide variety that exists in how a human brain can work, which is called neurodiversity. Of course, every brain is unique, but there is a range of what we, as a society, consider to be normal, which is referred to as neurotypical, and those outside that range are considered neurodivergent. Think for example of labels like autism, ADHD or HSP. And if we consider the whole range of types of brains, it suddenly appears to be very tricky to connect behaviors, brain activities and expressions to experiences. A lot is unknown in this regard, but this is not always acknowledged. There are many different ways people try to measure empathy. I will go into the two most popular strategies. The first is the following setup. A participant gets to see a picture, a movie, a story, something like that. Something that could evoke empathy. Then the empathy is measured in the participants, for example, by their facial expression, behavior, what they say, their heart rate, brain activity, all kinds of things. As I already mentioned, these observations could indeed give you an indication of what that person is experiencing. But if the participant is neurodivergent, the relationship between what you measure and the experience might be drastically different, yet the assumption is made that it is the same. The other popular strategy to measure empathy is using a questionnaire. A similar issue arises here, but then in the use of language. Assumptions are being made that if you ask different people the same question, they will interpret and answer the question in the same way. Well, if you are considering neurodiversity, you may find that you should actually ask a different question to get to know the same information in the answer. 
As a result, only people who interpret the things they get to see in the experiment or questions they get asked in a neurotypical way and express their empathy according to this norm, only they score high on empathy tests. Only they are considered to be empathetic. Empathy is then reserved to a subset of people based on certain assumptions about how you should express a feeling in order for it to be valid, in order for it to count as a true experience. This is what I call neurotypical gatekeeping of empathy. It is often said that autistic people lack empathy, but the research that supports this idea made it a self-fulfilling prophecy, a circular reasoning. If you define and measure empathy in a way that only neurotypical empathy counts as real empathy, well, yeah, then you will find that those who are not neurotypical score lower. Now, think about the impact this has. As I have mentioned before, empathy is valued in society. And when a group of people is excluded from being considered empathetic, this supports discrimination and stigmatization. Because if empathy is a virtue, and one hears that a certain group of people is less empathetic, you could conclude that these people are simply less good people. But are they actually less empathetic, or are they victims of exclusion and bias? And those who score high in these experiments, how empathetic are they towards neurodivergent people? The main takeaway is to be critical about what you read and hear about empathy. What do people mean? And is their interpretation of empathy actually related to being a good person or to being just neurotypical? And if you are an empathy researcher watching this, please be very explicit in what you mean by empathy and be careful in using a word with such a strong connotation in society. Research on how people behave and interpret things differently is very valuable, but don't confuse that with empathy being a virtue. I think it would be more fair to rethink how we define empathy and use it in an inclusive manner. How we should do that I'll explain in another video. Thank you for watching.